All right. Welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm Rich Walsh. If you need a roof, make sure you call Ireland Contracting. I, uh, you know what? I need a roof. I actually do. I'm, I might have to give them a call. Um, all right, we're going to go out to the phone lines, and we're going to talk to Nick in Newcastle. How you doing, Nick? Nick. Hey guys. Hey, what's up? Good. Um, thanks for taking my call. I want to. I want to talk about the remaining schedule between the Steelers and the Patriots for the one seed. Okay. It seems as if the media is. They're so quick to just hand this one seed to New England, but if you look at the two games they got, I know they're both in Foxborough, but they're playing Buffalo. And after what happened, what happened with Gronkowski and Tredavious White, I know uh, Tredavious White sent a text message to Ryan Clark pretty much saying, you know, we all want him. So, I mean, I don't think – I mean, I'm pretty sure Buffalo's going to go up there ready to play football, and I don't think it's crazy to think that they could lose that game. Nick, I think Buffalo's their only shot to win, uh, to lose. I really do. I mean, they're a double-digit underdog in this game, but I think Buffalo can keep it close. If you're asking me who I would bet on, yes, I would bet on Buffalo, but I don't think Buffalo has, really has a chance to win this game. Well, Nick. I understand that, but what I'm saying is I definitely think that they're going to be ready to play. No question. And, many- and they, got a good, good, they got a good game plan. I mean, Gene, yeah. you got a guy like um, LaShawn McCoy. You can win with a guy like that. You can hold onto the ball and keep the ball, and, um, and if you can keep it a good game, and if, you, if your defense rises – to the occasion and maybe somehow finds a way to stop Gronkowski and is maybe using this, uh, that hit, that late hit as motivation, that might be something. I just still think it's just going to be almost impossible, not improbable, um, but, that Buffalo wins this game. I think they, they might keep it close. They might keep it within that number. But, uh, Nick, I, I don't think that, that they have a really good chance of winning. And um, I, I would, when you're looking at these next two games, Gene, it's, it should seem like the Patriots should win both pretty easily. It should, but again. It's the NFL. It's the NFL. Buffalo went in there last year and won 16 to nothing. There was a mitigating factor. Brady did not play. And Yeah, Brady's going to be playing in both these games, and they have something to play for. Everyone seems, with New England winning, everyone seems to have something to play for. It's exactly what the NFL wanted, because if the Steelers would have won, they would have had nothing to play for the, the, the rest of the season. And, you know, now Jacksonville, the Steelers, and New England all have something to play it's for. Like so you're talking conspiracy there, Richie. No, I don't, I don't buy into conspir- conspiracies at all. I just do not buy into them, but I can see how people can. So uh, let's go out to the phone lines, and we're going to go out to um, – who, who are we going to here? We'll go to Brad in Pittsburgh. How you doing, Brad? Brad in Pittsburgh, what's up? How you doing, man? Good, thanks for calling. I want to know about this new running back we got. I heard he's from New England. Stephen Ridley. And he- yeah, is we talked any, about this he, yesterday. Is he any good or what? I mean, he was good back in 2012. Thanks for calling. And um, I know we talked about this yesterday, Gene, and I, I believe in conspiracy with, with this signing. You might not. But I think there's something to it, signing a guy from New England that played it in, in the Patriots organization up until 2014. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows what he remembers of that offense. Uh, is he any good? If he was any good, why would he be available in December? And if he, yeah, he hasn't played since two thousand in a game since two thousand and sixteen. I think the and, answer is no. Yeah, and it makes you wonder. So Fitzgerald Toussaint's going to be their number two guy, and it makes you wonder um, why didn't they just bring back D'Angelo Williams? Age. Age. Yeah. All right. Uh, back out to the phone lines. We're going to go out to who are we going out to here? Marilyn in Munhall. How you doing, Marilyn? Hi. Thanks Hello. for taking my call. Yeah. Thanks for calling. I'm a- question about the Penguins. Do you and Jean, could you come up with like an estimate of how many games the Penguins would have to win to get into the playoffs? Um, yeah, I, 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 we, it's so early. I don't, oh, I, you really can't really get into the hockey season until January, I think, Gene, just to be completely honest. I mean, following the, the, the race as closely as some people do, I don't really follow it until we get into January because so much ground can be made up. The, the Penguins are only, what, two points out of a playoff spot right now. Right. They're right in the mix. There's a bunch of teams in the mix, and there's, you know, I don't know what, I don't know what their magic number is. Well, they've played 39. Are they 19, 17, and 3? Is that what they are? Something like that, so yeah. So that leaves 43. So that's their magic number? Um, no, I'm trying to estimate the number of wins they need after 19. I don't know, 40? 
Yeah, that's probably a good estimate. I mean, you got to be in the in the. Uh, um, you know, I, I still think that the Penguins are going to be in the roughly in the ninety point range or more. Probably. So that'll get them in the postseason. I don't know what the break off was last year. Was it like 87, 88, 80, 85 in that range? I, I don't really know, but I, I'm not really worried about the Penguins getting into the postseason. I think they're going to get in. Uh, that's almost a lock. It's a guarantee. Let's go out to Jerry in Hemfield. How you doing, Jerry? Hey, Rich, I'm going to change the subject from football. Um, I was just reading about the Pirates. Uh, supposedly, uh, they was uh, offered to buy the Pirates, somebody for like a billion dollars. Nothing says, I'm not selling I'm going to keep it in the family, and I'm going to hand it down to my kids to run the, the organization. He said, I want to be like the Roonies. Now, there's no comparison between him and the Roonies, how they handle each organization. And then it shows they want to get rid of Cole and uh, about, uh, you know, uh, uh, McCutcheon staying going. I don't think the Pirates know what they're doing. They just put anything out in the papers. What you, what's your make on this? They're just all over the place. So just try to uh, narrow it in for me and tell me what you think about all this what they're saying. Thanks a lot, buddy. Jerry, I appreciate the call. That's such a broad question, and, and we could go on and on about that. Gene, I mean, what do you have to say? I, well, <clears throat> excuse me. The, the Pirates are trying to decide whether they're going to compete in 2018 or in 2019 as though they have any control over it. Um, you know, if they're not going to, that probably means they're going to move Cole and or McCutcheon. If they think they can compete, and that's a big if, then they're going to keep those guys and see what happens without spending a lot more money. Um, you know, are they going to be successful? No. This year, next year, no. Are they ever going to be successful? Not as long as nothing is there. Gene, but they, you know, the debate is can you compete next year or the year after, and that's how you make your moves. But you have nothing publicly and Huntington publicly coming out and saying, they are. They want to win a World Series. I know they want to, but they're yeah. they're striving to. They're putting themselves in position to be a World Championship team next year. How can you do that um, with this roster right now? There's, they need. There's so many holes, um, and they're not addressing those. They're letting other teams like the Cardinals, the Cubs, just keep adding, and the Pirates are sitting back and doing nothing. And you have nothing. I, I saw one of those interviews on on Twitter today. Nothing basically saying, "Hey, we're in the best position we've been in this time of the year in a long time." Yeah, this time of the year, they're undefeated. Um, <clears throat> if you're a Major League Baseball owner, you better say that you want to win the World Series. I mean, that's the absolute minimum. Uh, you know, I want to have a horse that wins a Kentucky Derby, but guess what? I cannot afford it, and neither can you, Bob. Yeah, he probably could afford it, and this I'm is where I go with, yeah, he just doesn't. This is where I, m my opinion on Major League and professional owners, this should be almost a hobby because you have to want to win to be in the game. And he's treating it as a business. I understand you don't want to lose money, but most of these owners that win all the time, they, they don't really care about money, and they, they just do it for pride, and they do it to win. Nutting's not in it for that. He's in it to make money solely. It's a business. And I think you're, you're doing your fans a, a you know, disservice if you're going to continue to run it like that. Would, that's just my opinion. All right, got to take a break. Back with some more of your phone calls, some tweets maybe if they're good, coming up next.